All right, let me welcome Tom Tryon from the Sarasota Herald Tribune. He's our moderator today. Let's give him a round of applause. And he will call up the panelists. Thank you very much. We'll do these first. Can everybody hear me? That's always the most important question. We good? It's full house. Um, just so everybody knows, before I bring up the crowd, the hardest working men in television, Charles Clapsaddle and his METV crew are here today. So they will be <coughs> taping this. Go home and watch it drive the ratings. Um, don't stand in front of the cameras, please. All right, the introductions are going to be incredibly brief today because we want to get down to uh, business. So first, I will... Actually, we have two Z's today. That's, I think, the, maybe a first in Tiger Bay history. Barbara Zadrovecki is president and CEO of Planned Parenthood of Southwest and Central Florida. Barbara? Of course, there was a baseball player named Dave Drubbecki with no he dropped, Z. He dropped, he dropped a Z. Mm -hmm. um, Christian Ziegler is Sarasota County's elected state committeeman. How many people know you have a, an elected state committeeman? All right. This is a socially aware group. Anyway, he represents 120,000 registered Republicans in Sarasota County. Christian Ziegler. All right. As Susan said, um, we're going to do questions and answers with our panel first. Then we will open it to those questions from the floor, and, um, and we'll go from there. So this is the time when the moderator normally sets the stage, but given the national attention on this issue, it shouldn't take long. I will just note, in August, the local GOP urged a defund Planned Parenthood rally in Sarasota County, and Mr. Ziegler attended that protest. Governor Rick Scott <coughs> excuse me, called for an investigation of Planned Parenthood statewide, an investigation that eventually found no wrongdoing. The Republican National Committee has called for Planned Parenthood to be denied any taxpayers' funds. In October, the House voted to defund the House of Representatives. <laughs> the, um, it's our special guest here. The Senate has um, a similar measure under consideration. Now, Republican leaders in Congress say they will avoid, they said they will avoid a shutdown, but some members want to force the issue and try to shut down the government over Pan Planned Parenthood funding. So that's the big picture. Let's zero in to our fair community. And let's talk first um, about what Planned Parenthood affiliate in our community does and doesn't do. So I'm gonna ask Barbara to provide an <coughs> overview of Planned Parenthood of, of what uh, Planned Parenthood of Southwest and Central Florida does. And uh, I'm gonna ask her to speak generally and then we're gonna talk about um, a breakdown on some of the services provided, budget, percentage of revenues, that kind of thing. Um, so Barbara, if you would, if you just wanna take a minute or two and just give us an overview of what your organization does. Thanks, Tom, and thanks to the board of um Tiger Bay for inviting me today. I've been involved with um, Planned Parenthood for over 21 years, and this is the first opportunity I've had to speak at Tiger Bay, so I appreciate it. Um, our Planned Parenthood of Southwest and Central Florida is actually celebrating its 50th year of service here in, Plan in Sarasota this year, and we were started in the basement of Sarasota Memorial Hospital by a bipartisan group of um, folks who cared about uh, women's reproductive health care. And um, over the course of that 50 years, of course, we've expanded and most recently merged into a new, new organization representing 22 counties um, and with 12 health centers and serving almost 40,000 women in southwest and central Florida. Um, I'm you know, happy to be here today. I think that with the discourse that um, has happened, we know that words matter. We've seen um, some evidence of that um, this week in the shootings in Colorado, and I'd like to ask everybody for 
you know, a second or two of silence and memory of um, those folks who lost their lives. And um, I'm hoping that uh, Christian and I can come to some common agreements that we can work together in order to make sure that women get um, the health care that they deserve in the state of Florida. Okay. And I think we can just take a moment, if everybody would like, and we can just pause for a moment. Thank you. So, Barbara, if you would, <clears throat> give us a breakdown by both patient volume, not raw numbers, mm -hmm. and maybe percentage of your revenue um, per service, for example, testing, contraception, mm -hmm. abortion. Well, our um, budget is $16 million now with the merge of affiliate, and 75% of that um, revenue comes from patient services. I would say that um, of that um, 75%, um, where the funding comes from, 20% um, of it comes from private insurances, which include Medicaid, 3% of that 20% are Medicaid patients. And we've recently ta started taking Medicaid only in the past two years since the Affordable Care Act um, was enacted and um, we have more patients who um, have insurance um, in, in Florida right now. And we have probably, I would say, 30% of our revenue is from abortion services, um, although in America, Abortion services is only about 3% of the services that all Planned Parenthoods offer. So our particular um, Planned Parenthood offers um, the abortion services, both medical and surgical, as um, Tom just spoke about. And the majority of what we do is preventative health care for women. We do cancer screenings, pap smears, all types of birth control, sexually transmitted diagnosis and treatment for men and um, for, for families. And we also um, do vasectomies for men. Um, the male part of our business is about um, less than 10% of the services that we offer. So I really look at it as to the, um, the um, specific uh, target population of who we serve. But really the majority of what we do is um, in cancer screenings and disease um, diagnosis and treatment as well as um, uh, birth control, which is um, for most young women their primary method of um, primary health care because it's the only physician access that they have. Okay, thank you. So just for clarity's sake, when you say medical abortion, mm -hmm. Uh, what are you talking about as opposed to surgical? Medical abortion is abortion by pill, which is um, an option that women have um, under certain circumstances, depending upon the gestational age of their pregnancy and um, their ability to um, follow directions and have a support person um, as they go through the steps to um, complete that um, procedure. Okay. So you take Medicaid, which is a federal state program. We do. Um, any other federal and or state dollars? In our Naples Health Center, um, they have the Title X program in Naples for um, seeing the health department patients, because the health department in Collier County does not provide um, the services for, um, for family planning. And so that is right now the only source of um, Title X that we have besides Medicaid from the federal government. Okay, so just clear. So no other federal money Correct. other than Medicaid. Correct. Except with the one exception in Naples. Correct, and that's for family planning services only. Okay, and has that always been the case or as long as you've been there? As long as I've been the case, Medicaid dollars do not pay for abortion services. Medicaid dollars um, are restricted by the Hyde Amendment, which was passed um, in 1976, shortly after Roe v. Wade, by Congress that um, stipulates that no monies can be used for abortion services that um, come from the federal government. Okay, thank you. So what percentage of your budget is raised through contributions, donations, fundraising? That's my biggest job. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, we, we try, we're well, fortunately, or we have a very generous community. And we have, um, in order to keep our doors open this year with our merged entity, have to raise 25% of our budget from private contributions, um, really a whopping $4 million that the generosity of our 
community um, step up for because we are able then to provide the services that are necessary. We keep our costs low. People understand the need for care. Unfortunately, you know, the state didn't pass um, the opportunity for Medicaid expansion, so we've left um, a million people in Florida without um, expanded Medicaid coverage, and so we're taking care of the working poor, so we reduce our rates for those cash-paying patients so that they're able to access um, medical care. Okay, thank you. Um, and just so everybody knows, um, the three of us and Morgan Bentley met a week ago just to kind of go over questions, ground rules, and that kind of thing. So just wanted to make sure you knew that. Go ahead, Sheriff. Take your dessert. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to feed the Sheriff. <laughs> oh, I've got it. Yeah, oh, that's an opening. <laughs> um, Okay, so let me go back uh, to one thing you said, um, and, and two things actually, um, that you mentioned in our pre-meeting. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do donors specifically provide money for um, low-income women who can't afford an abortion but want one? Yes, we have um, a donor pool that um, provides a scholarship, if you will, of um, monies that um, are available to women who can't afford the cost of an abortion. And I would say probably at least 80% of the women who come to us get some sort of a subsidy from those donor dollars. Okay, thank Private you. dollars. Private, okay. And, and just one more thing, I wanna go back. Um, so I think, did you, did you say that about 30% of your revenue um, here is, is abortion related? I believe that's true, and it's a high number because when you think about the fact, um, you know, that our, our regular services um, for a well women's visit, Medicaid reimburses $50 for um, a complete exam for a woman, including a pap smear, and abortions um, are about $500 per procedure. The percentage of um, revenue looks higher because abortion, because of course it's a more expensive procedure with higher acuity of medical care necessary than you do for a well woman visit. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, Christian, uh, for the unwashed among us, just briefly explain your position as, as state committee member. We're going to walk, walk through a couple quick questions here. Yeah, as Tom mentioned, there's actually a uh, Republican state committee man and also a Democrat state committee man. And that position ends up being on, on the bottom of your ballot. You'll see it um, in August coming uh, up this year. And um, our role. Uh, it is elected countywide. Um, to be able to vote for the position, you have to be part of that party. So the Republicans will vote. Registered Republicans can vote for a Republican state committee man. Registered Democrats can vote for their Democratic state committee man. And um, our role is to serve as a representative of all those individuals that are registered in our party at the county level. So in Sarasota County, we have about 120,000 registered Republicans. I am their representative within the Republican Party of Florida at the state level. Um, and I'm their voice and, their, and uh, I really take all the issues that they have for the party. Um, I take it up to the Republican Party of Florida, sit on numerous boards, and really represent them from the local level. Okay. So now are you on the executive committee? I certain? am. I, so I, in addition to that, there's essentially three elected Republican leaders for every county. There's a state committee man, state committee woman, and there's a chairman. So there's three elected leaders, and then we're all also members of the Republican executive committee at the local level. Okay. Uh, does the executive committee have a position on defunding Planned Parenthood? The, the local executive committee has not taken a position yet, um, you know, maybe in years past on Planned Parenthood, but not recently. Um, the National Republican Party, so there's the Republican National Committee, that's at the national level. Um, they have taken a position. They passed a resolution this summer um, urging the defunding of Planned Parenthood, which we're going to be discussing today. Okay. So um, the, uh, the, the protest back in, Octo was it October? I'm sorry. Um, uh, so August. August, I'm sorry. Um, so who, or, you know, who issued that proclamation to, to, to have the rally? So the, um, the protest was essentially, it, it was really pro-life groups that led the effort and organized it. Um, the party obviously promoted it and sent it out um, because our party's position is that we are pro-life. Um, so the party did push it out there. You know, some members of the party, you know, attended because they're citizens as well. But really the protests were led uh, by pro-life groups. There were a lot of members of the Catholic Church that were there as well. And the party just simply promoted it. Okay, thanks. Um, Could I ask a question, please? Sure. Um, you know, Christian, the emails that I got and the uh, flyers that I have were specifically um, 
was an invitation from you for the um, mm -hmm. rally. So yep. I just want to set that straight that um, you as a Republican committee man issued that um, that invitation to yep. people to come and protest with you and you in fact were at the protest as of, well. Of course, yes, I was there and uh, I proudly uh, did promote that. Um, I am pro-life, no doubt. I'm a social conservative. I wear it on my sleeve. I have no shame on it. Um, I'm a big believer in protecting the unborn. I think they deserve a voice. And just like any other event, and just like I'm sure many of you have, is when you see an event that you believe in or you see something that you're going to be attending, whether it's a political rally or whether it's a concert, doesn't matter, you would push it out to your friends and you would send it out. So, of course, I sent out the invite for that um, rally because it's a cause that I believed in and I wanted to make, su make sure that our side was well represented. So, uh, yes, of course, I did send it out. Okay. So, um, the obvious question is, uh, you believe Planned Parenthood should be defunded. Um, tell us why, please. Yeah, so, um, first I do, you know, we kind of jumped in this. I do want to thank everyone for coming. I mean, this is great. I think there's over 400 people here. Um, it's obviously a passionate issue on both sides. Um, I know we mentioned Colorado. Um, you know, really, when you look at something like that, uh, there's nothing pro-life about murder. That guy's a lunatic. There's no way that you can really paint him as a pro-life extremist, and that's why he's doing. But thanks. So you know, I think it's I, I think it's important for us to keep that in mind. And I'm a big believer. I do not condone violence anywhere. There's nothing pro-life about murder, whether it's at an abortion facility, whether it's in a library, at a school. There is nothing pro-life about murder, and I think we all need to keep that in mind. And I believe that what we're doing today is fantastic. I'm a big believer. You bring your ideas to the table. You have a conversation. You have a discussion. And look, we live in a democracy. You get enough people on your side to win the issue at the ballot box. And then also up in uh, Washington, you have people on your side really cast those votes. And that's how stuff should be pushed. Shouldn't be pushed through, you know, violence or murder or anything like that. Um, so it's great to see so many members of the community. I really love Tiger Bay. I think it's a great group. Uh, every month there's an issue that's being discussed. And I think it's important to have that discussion. And it's fine if you disagree with someone. Bring your points. Bring your facts. So that's essentially what I'm bringing to the table now. I will tell you a lot of the stuff that I will reference. You can kind of debate the Planned Parenthood issue basically two ways, the moral way and the religious way, or you can go just straight through facts, right? And you can just go through numbers. So I'm going to be bringing up a lot of numbers. A lot of my numbers are from the federal level because it's a lot easier to get facts at the federal level. I know the state and down locally, um, their numbers might be a little different, but it's pretty similar. But everything that I'm reading to you today and that I'm sharing today, I want everyone to keep in mind, these are from Planned Parenthood's annual reports. So you can actually, they put out an annual report. You can get the facts and figures on everything, and that's what I will be sharing today. All right. Let's go. Share. Why we want to defund? Yes, why defund? Okay. And I, I actually, and, and we, we discussed this as well in the, in the pre-meeting, not just why defund, but why defund when, when abortion is a legal service in this country. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so why defund Planned Parenthood? There's plenty of reasons. I'm going to go through basically the top seven that I really pulled out. Um, number one, they're independently wealthy. What many people don't realize is this organization, <laughs> just wait, I got facts. <laughs> so they're independently wealthy. Um, they raise money based on their services. Last year alone, they had $127 million in revenue over expenses. So they're making money on their own. They have money for their programs. That money, when they have excess revenue, it goes into an endowment and they store it. Why are we giving taxpayer dollars? They have $1 billion in assets. In the last 10 years, they've had actually $750 million uh, in revenue over expenses. Again, excess revenue there. And they're also a good self-funder, as Barbara mentioned. I mean, they're, they do a good job of funding their organizations through donors. And I encourage them to continue to do that if they'd like. Um, I don't believe that they need tax dollars. Then when you start looking at their expenses, this is where I kind of raise the red flag. Because remember, government, this is taxpayer dollars are going into this organization. They have excess of salaries. Their CEO, $600,000 last year is what they made, or what she made. Um, over 40 executives made over $200,000 across the country. Travel, $5.1 million spent annually. That comes out to $14,000 a day. It's going for private jets and all this stuff. Uh, money overseas, they send $32 million overseas. They send it to Africa, they send it to the Caribbean, and this is all through their IRS records. And, and you may support that, but I believe that you know, we have a State Department and there's already foreign aid and that's the appropriate venue. We don't need to be taking tax dollars, giving it to an organization and then having it go to other countries. 
Um, and then they spent $43 million on a piece of property two blocks from Madison Square Gardens. Is that really necessary? You know, if they really need tax dollars, should they be incurring those expenses? Their business model, this is number three, is centered around abortion. Abortion makes up 86% of their non-government revenue, 86%. As Barbara mentioned, locally it's 40%. 40%. So. Um, of their total revenue. Total revenue, it's about a little over 30 for the country. Now, I work in business. I know that when you're making your money on a specific product or service, you're gonna be focused on that. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind. And then when you look at the tax dollars from 2000 to 2013, tax funding went up from 202 million to 528 million. That's what we give annually. 528 million dollars a year goes to I'm, from I'm taxpayers. Sorry, okay. To interrupt you, but so when 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 you're referring to tax dollars at that level, yep. are you referring to anything other than Medicaid reimbursements? Uh, they have Title 10 too, as well, which is um, that's 10 percent of it. 90 percent of it's Medicaid that goes down to the states. They administer it. Right. So yep. fee for service. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, and so from 2000 to 2013, they've had an increase of taxpayer funding from 202 million to 528 million. During that same period, they've had a 66% increase in the number of abortions and a 61% decrease in the number of adoption referrals. So they're in the abortion business. We can talk about this 3% number and I can dive into that later if you'd like, but they're in the abortion business. And then just a couple more points I'll just go through real quick is there are 22 comprehensive health care clinics for every one plan, Planned Parenthood location. And that's important to remember because those comprehensive health care clinics, they actually provide more services than Planned Parenthood does. And they're also located in the local area. When we have within 25 miles, there's actually 28 different locations in Sarasota and Manatee County that provide the services that Planned Parenthood does in addition to additional services that they provide. So it's important for us to keep in mind that Planned Parenthood isn't, isn't the only option. Now, you may think it will, it is, and I actually, to be frank, a couple years ago, I actually thought it was too, because they have the biggest megaphone because they have the most dollars, and they can get out there and they can get their message out, and they give that perception that it's the only place that you can get this, these solutions and these services, and that's just simply not true. And then, the, you know, obviously there's the moral issue for Christians. You look at these videos, that's very concerning. And lastly, this is a political organization. $22 million has gone from Planned Parenthood to the Planned Parenthood Action Fund in the past five years. 99.4% of those donations have gone to Democrats. So what they do is they take tax dollars, it goes in and funds some of their services, they take that money, they give it to their political action committee, and then what they do is they help Democrats, who once they get in office, they give that money back to Planned Parenthood, they make sure that they continue to get their funding, and then when they're up for re-election, Planned Parenthood's there to give them a check for their election again. So this is a political organization as well. So I personally believe Planned Parenthood has two options. Number one, you either, you split the organization. If you want to continue to do abortions, that's fine, but split the organization so there's no way that those dollars can bleed from other services in Planned Parenthood to the abortion side. Or number two, continue to do abortions and just simply don't take taxpayer dollars into the, into the organization, just like these other community health centers that do not take, do not have abortions, but do take tax dollars. Okay, thanks. All right, Barbara, you want to... Thank Respond. you, Christian, for um, what you, for your opinions, and I'm going to try to do a level set here about um, what Planned Parenthood um, actually does. You know, Planned Parenthood is an organization that has been in existence for almost 100 years. One in five women come to Planned Parenthood at some point in their lives because of the kind of care that we deliver that really isn't available in the other places that um, Christian just talked about. The federally qualified certainly have a place in the health care fabric. Um, there are 600 of them listed in the state of Florida, but they are also listed as dental offices, podiatry offices, offices that are located in schools. They could not provide the services that Christian is talking about. And women come to Planned Parenthood because of the confidential care that they get, because of the special treatment that they get, and because we handle very sensitive issues of reproductive health care that are so important to women and to families. And so I would say that um, that argument doesn't hold water. So the American people really believe that Planned Parenthood should be funded. Our research shows that 75% of American people, including 68% of Republicans, believe that Planned Parenthood should continue to be funded because of the work that we've been doing for almost 100 years. So when you and I want to, excuse me, I think you had some time. It's my time now. Um, as far as abortion goes, abortion is a legal 
a legal service, that a legal procedure that is um, guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States at this point and the Supreme Court. We believe that um, abortion should be safe. It should be done um, in the best circumstances where women get the very best care. There are a lot of people in this room that remember what happened when abortion wasn't legal prior to Roe v. Wade. And our emergency rooms were filled with women who were dying, who had sepsis. And when Roe v. Wade was passed, it stopped immediately. And with these draconian laws that are being passed, with the defunding and what's happening with states um, passing onerous access laws, we're returning to these um, situations again. And so it's very important for women to have safe access to legal abortion that's done with very good care. And Christian, if people could make a lot of money making abortions, there would be a hell of a lot more abortion providers in America because right now, it is not a money-making business. It would be so, taken on by people who um, would make it a money-making business, and it isn't. So we have to do fundraising in order to keep our doors open and to make sure that our patients get the care that they need every single day, no matter what. So uh, just real quick, Tom, because she pointed out a couple things. Um, you know, you let off with saying that this is my opinion. Again, w that's why I let off my comment saying that all of my numbers come directly from Planned Parenthood's annual report and their tax filings. I mean, these are numbers that anyone on the public can go online, you can download those reports and you can see it. Um, second, you know, I'd be curious, I mean, what is the cost of an abortion and then what are you guys charging and what are you making on an abortion? Um, I really could, I really don't know exactly that what we're making on an abortion, but I would say that we probably are covering our cost. The cost of an abortion, um, a basic first trimester abortion in our health centers is about $500. That's a cost of physician care, ultrasound mm -hmm. care, the RNs that we need, all of the medications that we do, the follow-up that we have 24 hours a day. It's a standard price that is um, the market price in the, in the area. And as I said, if a woman can't afford that, that, then we make sure that she has the subsidization from private dollars that makes sure that she can have that. None of it is paid for by um, state dollars as well. But again, the majority of the care that we are focusing on with the defunding of Planned Parenthood is basic preventative care that stops the need for abortion in the first place. It is birth control. It is testing and diagnosis of sexually transmitted diseases. It is well women care for women who don't have access to health care anywhere else. And we know what's happened in this state. We know that recently the governor has said that he is going to stop having obstetrical care delivered by the health departments in this state. If we care about children and we care about families and babies, why is the governor going to discontinue those um, services that are so important for maternal and child health in Florida? And I would ask you, as a Republican, mm -hmm. would you are you supporting that? Am I am supporting, I supporting the governor's recommendation to stop? Well, I know in the county, at the county, I mean, we're, the county is fully funded. The health departments are fine. I mean, there was an article that came out. I think that's there's not true. There's an article true. that I, came out. I, I mean, think that is, ma'am, ma'am, if, if, if you can laugh, but if, there is an article. I mean, you can look in the Herald Tribune, and Tom can attest to this. They have their funding for the next. I think it's three to five years. Well, they're covered. And uh, Barbara, I think it's really, I mean, it, it's shocking. I mean, you're the CEO of the organization. I'll tell you, I run a business. You know what your margins are. You know what your costs are, and then you know what you make on a service. There is no way that you do not know what you are making on an abortion. Well, I will say to you, Christian, that as a business person, you know, our rates fluctuate depending upon, you know, the services that and the, and the pieces of that component that we, um, that we look at. Um, we have to, as Planned Parenthood, really look at the amount of scrutiny that we are under, which is probably three times as high as everybody else. Our books are know. open. You obviously have an opportunity to um, get to all of our, um, our financials. And Planned Parenthood has been under the gun for a really long time. We have to do things at, you know, in a level that's above everybody else. And I would ask any businessmen in this, or women in this um, organization, if you had to go through um, every day, wondering if the actions of your staff are being surreptitiously, surreptitiously um, videotaped um, so that they could find you saying something or doing something wrong. If you would have um, the governor, you know, suddenly come out with um, 
allegations that you're doing something wrong, even though that you're not, and you have to spend an additional $100,000 out of your budget to prove yourself innocent. What kind of businesses could continue doing this work with the scrutiny that we have and the constant protests that come to our health centers and um, the, the attacks that come um, to Planned Parenthood? We have stood strong, and yes, we have a political pack, as you say. That political pack is follows the IRS guidelines. We are able to separate ourselves um, from the pact or the 501c3 as many of the p uh, businesses in the um in the um, room do. Um, it is important. We will support people who are going to support us because how else can we make sure that women in this country continue to have access to reproductive health care in a safe environment? All right. Well, unfortunately... Oh, hang on. I'm going to jump in here. Um, so um, let me ask you the, uh, this, Christian, and uh, back in August, after the email went out, um, Bob Johnson, a retired physician in, in this community, wrote this column in the Herald Spune. He said, personal freedom and limited government are the core principles of the Republican Party. That's why Republicans have long supported family planning, and that's why I was so frustrated to see our Republican Party in Sarasota County send out an email to members encouraging us to protest our local Planned Parenthood Health Center. So how, how do you react to that assertion yeah. that, that that Republican, that this is an invasion of privacy and, um, and personal freedom. Look, there's some issues are more important than politics, than political ideology, and one of those issues is life. At the end of the day, I personally believe, I, I personally believe that if you can't protect life, what can you really stand for? And at the end of the day, I think that in a couple, in probably 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, generations are gonna look back at our generation and they're going to say, what were you thinking? Just like when we go back and we look at slavery in the 1800s, and we look at what happened in the 1940s, it's true. At the time, there were a lot of people that didn't speak up, and there were, there were actions that were going on that were horrific. In my personal belief, and again, this is where you come back, and everyone has their own personal beliefs. My personal belief that is people are going to look back and they say, what were you thinking with the killing of millions of potential Americans, citizens, babies. What were you thinking when you were doing that? And that's going to come. And, and obviously I have my you know, personal faith. And also if you look at just the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life. That's in the Declaration of Independence. That's Christian, in the Constitution. I, I respect... I respect I, your. I, um, I apologize, but I'm. Uh, just all right, one okay. second. And it, additionally, is you have to remember these children in the womb. They have no one speaking up for them. They deserve a voice as well. And I personally believe that we need to, as a society, we have a moral obligation to stick up for life, to stick up for that unborn, and ensure that they are not killed. Okay. So. Um, okay. So you you believe that abortion should be illegal? I do. Under I do. any circumstance? No. The exceptions would be? No exceptions. No exceptions. Un uh, now, if you have, obviously, you side on the side of life. So if you have a mother in a case, but that is so very small. But the other exceptions, I do not believe in the other exceptions. Okay. Rape, incest? No. Excuse me? Rape, incest? No. I don't, I don't believe that you should have two tragedies because of one tragedy. Okay. And I would um, ask, ask Christian to consider the fact that I, you know, I respect his opinion, his individual opinion, but there are other people of faith who feel otherwise, and it's not the moral, um, the moral consensus around America that um, abortion is wrong. There are many people who have worked, um, people of faith who work for um, Planned Parenthood, who work with women who have to make those extremely difficult f um, positions with their um, faith and with their family with their doctors. Mm -hmm. I brought you a book, Christian, called Sacred Choices, <laughs> which is the right to contraception and abortion in 10 world religions, which is written by a Jesuit um, priest. Because I do think it's important to understand that Planned Parenthood is not a faithless organization. We have many people in our organization who attend church regularly, our staff, mm -hmm. our doctors. We feel that giving women an opportunity to make a very difficult choice in the situation that they're in is the moral high 
high ground. That the work that we do and is so important to make sure that women can stay out of poverty, that they can actually um, make their, you know, their, their place in the world for what's going on with them. And again, abortion is a legal service. And we believe that that is a part, a small part, of the fabric of health care services that we provide and that we will continue to advocate for no matter what. All right. and, and you know, when, when we start talking about faith and people, people's belief in faith and what part of faith they believe in, I mean, they're probably misinterpreting the Bible that I'm reading. Um, if you look at Proverbs 6, 17, God lists six things that he hates. And one of them is specifically, and I quote, hands that shed innocent blood. And that is what's happening here. We have to keep that in mind. Okay, thank you. All right, so Tom, we are going to go to questions. Tom, we've got one over here. All right, and, and I'm just going to invoke this. Please, please, please ask a question. Ask the question quickly. And I don't mean to be mean guy, but if you, give this, if you get, start preaching, I'm going to cut you off. <laughs> and let him hold the microphone, please. <laughs> don't thank trust you. me, huh? I'm Susan Grundy. I'm a Tiger Bay member. I have um, something I'd like Barbara to talk about. Teen Source mm -hmm. is a tremendous gift to this community. And in all the rhetoric, some of the things that are important are lost. Would she talk about that and what other sexual health programs are provided through Planned Parenthood? Thank you. I trust you now. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, there are three tenets to the Planned Parenthood services. Medical services, which get most of the attention, our educational services, and our advocacy. Our educational services are so important because we do outreach in the community to at-risk young people, and the source is a very good um, example of that, where we use um, local young people, train them to be sex educators, as well as um, they're trained to be um, actors and actresses, and they take their message to, in the form of plays that are about very specific issues in our community, not just about um, sex, although certainly unplanned pregnancy and keeping yourself protected is important, but gang violence, anti-smoking, drug abuse. Um, these plays are actually being commissioned but with partnerships by um, groups in the community, including the health department and CAN, so that young people can see what um, the, re the, uh, res the responsibility they have in making good decisions. And we know that there are people in this room whose lives have been altered by watching a source performance and being able to make good decisions that have changed the course of their lives. So it is um, a very important part and something that doesn't get funded. You know, when we talk about the, um, the lack of, um, you know, the monies that we have to raise, our outreach education funding all has to be raised by the private, by private dollars now because we don't have federal dollars for sex education. I think that's something that, you know, we could agree upon too working together. As I said with um, Christian's notoriety is one of the hundred most important people in um, Tallahassee, which he got. Did I say that already? Congratulations. It was in uh, the Sun. I didn't even Saint, know I got that award. The St. Pete <laughs> Times uh, blog yesterday that with his influence in Tallahassee, we could we could lobby together for sex education dollars so that our young people have access to good quality um, education that are important to get make them have the, the ability to make good decisions. Every other industrialized country in the world does this. They do sex education early on in schools and Florida and the America is lagging behind so dramatically. So okay. can, can I respond to that? Sure. Or? Yeah. Quickly, please. Just real quick. Um, so. I will not, you know, disagree that there are some services that Planned Parenthood provides that's very important. Um, but what's important to remember is this is the issue, is the fact that they have their revenue generator and the issue that motivates them in abortion. How can they legitimately provide other services when it comes to care for pregnant women? How can they provide legitimate services for sexual education when they have the abortion side? And again, that's my point here, is I don't know why you have an organization providing those services, but then you have the moneymaker on abortion, and you have them both combined. Why not split it up? It just makes total logical sure. sense. Christian, we do more to prevent the need for abortion than any group in this country. It, all right, we have a question right here somewhere 
My name is Linda Weinrich. Uh, I'd just like to address this to Barbara. Um, a number of times you said abortion is legal in this country, and my view is that judges have legislated from the bench, and judges aren't supposed to legislate from the bench. This has never been brought to the vote of the public, and I think that you would find that there is a much greater proportion of people that are concerned. Well, it's an, you know, she mentioned this okay. about All right. All right. Okay. Ju just remember to put it in the form of a question. All right. <laughs> That's like Jeopardy. <laughs> yes, <I'm sorry. laughs> All right. Anyone else? So I'm sorry. Was there a question there? Yeah. You said that it was legal. It is legal. But it's been legislated from the bench. Well, the Supreme Court is the law of the land. It's interpreted by the bench. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Victoria Finley, Tiger Bay member. My question, Christian, is um, from the opposing side of you, if we are going to not allow termination of pregnancies, how do we passionately and financially care for these unwanted children when, a, when, when adoption is so cost prohibitive for the majority of Americans that really do wish to adopt is very expensive. So what is the solution there? It's a financial question, it's a political question, and one that I have not heard addressed by, by that side. All right, we'll, we'll do it. So it's, it's really, I hate the term unwanted babies. Um, and, I'll, and I'll explain why. That's a, that's a phrase that is used to justify abortion because they somehow, it's true, and what they do is they, they limit the, the respect or, or, or the, the label for that child that is in the womb. What I will tell you is there is no unwanted babies out there. What you have are, what you have are there are four million, there are four million individuals, and I actually agree with you here. So there are, okay. Yeah, oh, okay, all right, that's fine, and I apologize. Um, so I, I will agree with you with adoption. There are actually some, the numbers that I've seen. There's about four million people that are interested in adopting. You're exactly right. It it is difficult to adopt. I mean, I have a, one of my good friends. Uh, he just went through that process, and it takes years and years. And he's a respectable guy, makes good money, doesn't have a criminal record, is married, everything on paper really checks out, and um, they make it so difficult to adopt. So I personally believe that our focus really should be on the adoption process. What can we do to make it better? Are there regulations that we need to take a look at and maybe adjust? Um, are there resources that we need to put towards? I mean, look, I'm a, I'm a limited government guy. I am not an anarchist. I mean, I believe that government does have a role in certain cases, and this is something with adoption. If we can facilitate healthy families, and I will tell you, some of the most loving parents that I've ever seen, period, are individuals that adopt. Because they do go through that process. They spend a ton of money. They spend a lot of effort. And a lot of those people, unfortunately, can't have children. And I would encourage adoption as much as I could. So I do agree with you. I mean, there is a problem there, and it def definitely does need to be looked at and adjusted. So we have more public money to assist adoptions? Yeah, I mean, if it makes, if it makes sense. I mean, I, and I apologize. I'm not an expert at adoption. I will, I will flat out admit that. Um, and I don't know what kind of funding goes there, what kind of ROI they're getting out of it, what's really working, what's not working. But if there's a way that we can put dollars towards it and encourage adoption and get it, absolutely. I mean, I can't tell you how many people that I know have gone through that process, and it is very, very difficult. So, But, Christian, this is something that you certainly should um, take you know, a look at, and with all of the digging you've done into Planned Parenthood and your passion for adoption, I would encourage you to take that on as a political project. Well, all right, next question. Oh, you have to hold it? Okay, Marilyn Harwell. First, a very quick uh, statement. Christian, every nonprofit CEO knows the importance of an endowment because of the vagaries of government grants and other grants and funders dying. My question, though, is I would like you to explain why you think abortion is wrong, but you have never ever addressed, you being the Republican Party, have not addressed wealthy people going to schools like Harvard and Yale and the other New England schools, paying beautiful, tall, if they're short parents, girls, $5,000 for their eggs so they can have beautiful, smart, gorgeous children. I would like you to explain why not from a religious point of view, but from a moral or ethical point of view, why it's okay 
to change the DNA of children to buy eggs to then pay someone up to $75,000 to carry the eggs. Why okay. is that okay right. and an abortion isn't? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I apologize. I only heard like half of, of, of your statement. I could only make out now. I will tell you, uh, when you say address it on a moral, not a religious, my morals are driven from my religious background and my religious beliefs. So, um, you know, when I look at that and I look at abortion and you ask, you know, why do you believe that abortion should be illegal? I mean, it definitely starts with my faith. But then when you go down and you start looking at the role of government and what is in the Constitution, that comes up as well. And you look at the, the protection of life. Again, and, and I kind of repeated this, I really believe that future generations are going to look at us and say, what were you guys thinking? This could be my granddaughter, my great-granddaughter. And, and, you know, they're going to look at me... Granddad, what were you guys thinking? And I really think we need to take into consideration, I'm encouraging everyone to look forward a little bit, really look at what we're doing and how this can be defined. And I think, Christian, one of the things that we should look at is how far the Republican Party has gotten away from their roots, because I have so many Republican friends who have are no longer able to be practicing Republicans because of the, um, you know, of the the very strong opinion that you are you're driving home. Mm -hmm. You know, family planning in America was started by Republicans. We have um, Barry Goldwater and George Bush and. Um, President Nixon were all the founders of Title X services in America. They believed that women had access to, should have access to reproductive health care. They believed in freedom of choice. They believed that abortion should be legal. And that straying away from um, their core beliefs has really caused a lot of the issues it, that we're facing today. If we all work together, um, working towards um, reducing unintended pregnancy, reducing the need for abortion, advocating for sexuality education, we would all be in a much better place, you, both parties. You know, and, and, and I actually hear it on the other side, and it's interesting is people say, oh, the Republican Party, you know, is becoming too social. I'll tell you, there's a lot of social conservatives that did not vote in the last presidential election. And the reason why is because the Republican Party has shifted, some candidates have shifted from that area. So I kind of hear it on the other side as well. Um, but what I'll tell you is, like, I, I just really think you look at this issue and this is just so important. This goes beyond politics. This goes beyond Republican versus Democrat. This goes beyond the November elections. And it comes down to a moral issue, and we have a moral obligation to protect life. Right. It goes beyond, it does go beyond um, politics. It goes beyond human decency and human rights because women have rights to control their own fertility. They have rights to control so, their own lives. Okay. And they have rights to determine the future and make sure that their children live um, up to their potential. So, Barbara, let me ask you. I mean, should I have stayed silent if I was living during slavery? Should I have stayed silent if I was living in Nazi Germany? It's true. Should I have stayed silent when I saw an injustice I just because I happened to be white or just because I happened to be a Christian? I think what um, the issue is here is it's not, the, it's not staying silent. It's that words matter, Christian. And the vitriolic words are insightful and painful and hurtful. And women in this country deserve to be respected. There's nothing. I will tell you, I've stood outside, and, and I encourage you guys. Um, you can go out to a Planned Parenthood on Fridays, and you can see these individuals that are standing outside of the facility. You walk up to them. There are many members of the church. You would see a, a lot of members of the Catholic Church. You'll see pro-life groups. And you walk up. There is nothing about it, in, you know, promoting violence or hurtful words. They're there praying. They're silently praying. Now, there's extremists on both sides. I will be the first to admit, there's extremists on the very far right. There's some people out there, and there are people on the very far left. It's equal on both sides. But you should not, we do a disservice to the conversation and to the discussion if you attempt to paint the entire opposite position of yours as someone that is incentive, you know, promoting violence. Well, I will tell you that at our health centers, we have a non-engagement policy with all of our volunteers and everybody that stands with us. And anybody that has been there knows that we do not have um, confrontations within um, our health centers. I will say, though, that, and I want to get back to one point that I didn't, wasn't able to make in the beginning. We do not do fetal tissue programs in the state of Florida, despite the allegations that were um, made by um, the Republican Party in their press release that went out that were... Um, what were they specifically? 
that we did, that you came to um, protest us because of the fetal tissue programs that mm -hmm. we did at Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. And we do not do those in Florida, and the Florida and Department of Law Enforcement put out a release this week totally clearing us of any of those allegations. I needed to make that clear today before we leave. And, okay. and this is important. Right, is no, that's we that's said that's Planned good. Parenthood, whoa, whoa, whoa. not specifically the local. So obviously it's difficult okay. to tell. Each All right, we got it. We got it. Yep. Last question. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be. By the way, yeah, we... I almost that. forgot my question. <laughs> I'm Julie Brady. I want to address this to Christian. We've heard about the, the services of Planned Parenthood and how active they are. Christian, are you aware of the crisis pregnancy center support that mm -hmm. is all over the state of Florida and all over the country? Do you know about the thousands of centers that support mothers who choose life okay they sure does yeah one one thing during this entire process that i've had the privilege of doing is i went and toured uh the sarasota pregnancy center here locally and dr sullivan's in the back and um uh jennifer carey she's the executive director and what's interesting about that is that's an organization that's there to support women when they're pregnant you can go to them for help and they provide educational services they really help them take it take the baby to birth and then even after birth for a year they're providing services and they have an interesting program where you know you have education and based on how many classes you go you get points and then based on the points you can actually redeem them for diapers and other care that you need for your child unfortunately what i hate hearing is they don't get federal dollars i mean those they get organizations state dollars they are they get they, they get, get state a dollars. very very limited amount of state dollars we're talking i think it's about twenty thousand to thirty thousand or somewhere around that range every year but they're totally dependent on donations and um, even the state dollars aren't guaranteed. They got to hope for it every single year. They so, did, you know, when you start talking year. about the fact that this organization, it is only there to help support women that have pregnancies and they're poor or people with unwanted pregnancies, as we discussed, they're there to support them and they help get them to term. They help get them to birth. They help them after birth and they're there to support them. So we have some amazing services and some amazing um, resources at the local level. And unfortunately, they're left out and you have Planned Parenthood that has the biggest megaphone. They have a lot of dollars. They can get their marketing. Planned Parenthood does a great job marketing and they do get their message out through marketing and these other organizations, really people don't know about them. So that's been a great thing during this whole process as I have been able to tour those facilities and see those facilities for firsthand. And our marketing is done by one out of five people in America, one out of five women in America that have used Planned Parenthood at some point in their lives. That is our biggest marketing tool because they believe that they've received the best service and um, quality services. And, um, you know, again, we don't get money from the state. The crisis pregnancy centers do. And I'm sure that there is a place for the crisis pregnancy centers, well, but I want to be very clear that they do not do options counseling. They do not assist women with their um, with the decision making about um, whether or not they should um, move forward with their pregnancy or not and to be fair which, which is which is great because they're actually encouraging birth and to carry that child not kill that child but what I will tell you is all right we got to go to the last question hi Donna Barkham uh, Tiger Bay member and also a Republican and my question is to Barbara Barbara not all of us Republicans feel maybe as extremely as Christian has stated. Mm -hmm. However, I have to tell you that from, and I'd like you to address this, on a national level, I feel that whether the tapes were surreptitiously obtained, whether there was some editing involved, it's extremely disconcerting as, whether I'm a Republican or a Democrat, that your, the way your organization is handling this issue. I, I'd like you to address how you feel the organization is handling it at a national level. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the fact that you said that you're not doing anything locally. And um, I don't want to okay. diminish the, the, the programs that you do. do. Thank you. Yeah. And it's a good question. I mean, you know, those videos were difficult for everybody to watch. Um, uh, certainly. Um, you know, struck at everybody's um, heart because um, it isn't our normal tone that um, we use in Planned Parenthood. You know, they were sort of, I can't say that word, sorry, they were heavily edited and um, really released with a lot of um, political um, influence um, timing for when the um, funding was coming out for Planned Parenthood in Congress with the presidential um, candidates. Um, and so, um, 
we have in our congressional hearings, and there are five of them that are investigating Planned Parenthood um, during this um, inquiry, um, have made the decision of the three health centers that are providing those services, three out of over 700 health centers in America are providing um, fetal tissue programs um, to no longer um, charge for those um, programs. We believe that women should have the right to um, donate their tissue if they want to, but um, we have made as an organization the decision not to charge for them. So we believe heavily in um, research. We have been um, you know, lauded by the um, American Medical Association recently for Planned Parenthood's role in reproductive health care as well as in um, science um, and disease prevention and research, um, as well as the uh, New England Journal of Medicine. We have many, many allies in um, the work that Planned Parenthood does. Um, and we will continue to um, keep our clinics open no matter what. We believe very strongly in the work that we do and are, and are proud of it. But this was right. a, an extraordinarily difficult time. Tom, right, this next question. This, the video issue is an important issue. This is one of the top issues, and we have not really dove into this. And by saying that those videos are, in it, are edited, that's heavily just heavily edited. Heavily edited. So what's interesting is every video that came out, I think there's 12 videos now, and hopefully everyone goes back and watches them to become as informed as you can. I'm one of those, I like to see both sides, watch everything. If you look at all 12 videos, there are three things that are released with every single video. There's a shorter video, so people can watch it like if they're at work or whatever. It's about 10 minutes, 12 minutes. But then they have a link right below that that goes to the full unedited video. And then right below that, they have a link to the full transcript of what happened in the full video. So when you say that the videos are edited and all that, they shorten them up to keep people's attention. But then when you go down below, you can watch the full videos if you actually click on the links right below. So by saying that they're edited, it is another tactic by Planned Parenthood to shift the dialogue and shift the discussion and shift the focus. And it's simply just not true. Again, okay. I Next would question. ask every business person in this room, if you had to think every single day of every interaction that you had, that you may be filmed in order to show up on TV tomorrow morning, if your staff had to walk through protesters to come to work every day, if right, you were... You guys should be videoed okay. even more because okay, you guys are... Okay, we have two more enough, enough, stop, stop. We have, we have two more questions. Please. Relax. Sorry. Everything's all right. <laughs> all right, question please. All right. <laughs> Give me the microphone. <laughs> No. All right, I have a question. Why is it that the sancti sanctity of life is important when it's life in the womb, but individual liberties and the sanctity of it are important for the Second Amendment? Why is one different than the other? What the so in other words, we're talking about individual liberties, mm -hmm. right? The right to choose. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about the Second Amendment, even though from the Second Amendment comes a lot of death, that's paramount that we take over, we, we acknowledge the right to choose for the Second Amendment, the right to own a gun. But yet, life is important when it comes to life in the womb. Look, no one's given the, the baby a chance to choose life. I mean, no one's being that voice for the baby. So that's number one. Number two, when you talk about guns, I mean, guns are also saving lives. I mean, people... <laughs> You guys need to pick up the newspaper because if you pick up the newspaper, you will see people breaking into homes, people going after families, and people using guns in the majority of cases for protection of themselves. So I encourage you, like, look past whatever news sources you're looking at and look at the facts because people have guns and they're using them to protect themselves. And we have to keep that in mind. So you All are right. using... Okay, last, last question. Last question. Before we lose the crowd. Yes, hi, Sheila Weiss, Tiger Bay member. Personal question to Barbara. We've been doing a lot of talk about politics, and I, I just, you have a young daughter, and I just was wondering, how, could you comment on what your work does for your young daughter and for young girls around the country? Mm -hmm. Well, my daughter actually was two years old when I started. She now just graduated from college. And so um, I had started it because I thought that I would be able to help secure a future for her where um, we wouldn't still be having this argument. Um, I know that um, 
you know, watching my daughter growing up and the um, confusing issues that young women have, their um, inability to get information um, at school, um, even with a good relationship that I have with my daughter, her her unwillingness to come to me um, to ask questions. And this is this happened just recently where I was asking her about her birth control and she was like, no way, Mom, that's between me and my doctor. I'm not going to talk to you about that. <laughs> that's the kind of things that we have to provide um, an opportunity for young people to have so that they make sure that they get um, accurate answers to their questions because let you know let's face it sex is tough to talk about um, anywhere and um, we provide a safe place for young people to have those very difficult questions answered it's one of the things that I think um, sets us apart from the federally qualified health centers because we involve young people and their families in that kind of discussion so thank you for asking me about my daughter she's been a real heroine and allowing me to have the time to to do this fight for 21 years thank you all right, everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you very much to our panelists. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara.